Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Now, let's start. All right. Uh, I'm Rufayo Sidi. <laughs> and I am Sheito Atigari. I mean, what a day. The day after we lost Kobe Bryant. But, but it's all right. It's fine. Painful, but life goes on. All right. Uh, the, EMOS, uh, the People's Democratic Party are yet to come to terms with the various verdicts of the Nigerian Supreme Court, especially that of Imo State in Southeast Nigeria. The party deployed the use of social media to drive home their disaffection. The party shared multiple tweets of their protest in different states, tweeting hashtag Save Our Judiciary. The PDP wrote ongoing peaceful protests in several states of the Federation against the APC-led government, annexing of the judiciary. They also tweeted a live video from Katsina State showing protesters demanding for the reversal of the gubernatorial election judgment by the Supreme Court. Now joining us to discuss the reaction to the verdicts of the Supreme Court is Comrade Binga Ogunleye, Coordinating Secretary, PDP, Alimosho Movement. Right. Uh, great to have you, Comrade. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Yeah. I mean, we've... We've all seen, we've seen the videos, we've seen everything that's happening on social media, um, PDP pushing for the Supreme Court to go back to the drawing board and reverse the verdict. Now, we know that the judgment of the Apex Court is sacred and final. However, this push still remains so. Why is the PDP so insistent on this reversal? If, you know, in other cases, the Supreme Court has come forward and, you know, proven PDP come out. Well, thank you. Um, we must understand that um, that the Supreme Court uh, judgment is final it does not mean that the Supreme Court cannot uh, uh, make error. Uh, the judges say the Supreme Court is uh, infallible because it's final. It's not that it's final because it's infallible. Mm -hmm. And we have taken time to look at the judgment very critically. And we are convinced that, of course, there is an error. There is an error. It is quite unthinkable that uh, APC could have won that election. Don't forget that we had two elections same day, governorship and the House of Assembly. And we have 27 seats of the House of Assembly. APC did not win one, not one. So how come the same election, the same day? How could you amass so much votes for the governorship and you record total loss for the House of Assembly. So can you break down the technicalities? Because we know that the fulcrum of this judgment was based off of the 388 polling units that were exempted in the first place. Exactly. And now the Supreme Court has said, you know what, after looking at this, we believe that the APC should be the winner. So what are the, how do you know that the, the, the judgment is wrong? How did you come to this conclusion? We were saying that this judgment was based on technicalities and not the fact or the reality. The, the, we, we are being punished for the failure of INEC, or maybe the failure of the lawyers, maybe because they do not took, the, uh, took their time to really, I mean, fought the, the 388 uh, pulling uh, result they were not considered. But nobody uh, considered. talks about them, you know, actually, you know, setting the cross reference as regards those 388, but it was struck out by the court. So it talks about the lawyers, because a lot of people have been saying that maybe the lawyers didn't do that. But the lawyers did do that, you know, challenging that. Because when you look at the gamut of a case, this was a case that at the tribunal level was dismissed. The Court appeal of Appeal dismissed. dismissed. So how come all of a sudden then there was a case made and the lawyer said, you know, we, we tidy up our ends properly? And, and that is why we are saying something is actually fishing. You know, as much as we will try not to uh, uh, malign the judiciary, what well, we are saying that few days to the judgment, you, you are aware of the father in Baka uh, uh, prediction, you are aware of, of not being of some political uh, leaders of the APC with father in Baka. I, I want to believe that it was uh, like no, no. testing do, do, the waters. Do you have evidence of that? Of APC leaders hobnobbing with Fadam Of Baka. course. Uh, because the, 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 the former every, governor. Everybody hobnobs with Fadam Baka. Oh, oh, the former governor of. Uh, uh, Ganduje was of, there uh, with uh, Fadam Baka. So everybody visited Fadam Baka. Ganduje was there. Yeah. Uh, Akume was there. Peter Obito has been there uh, uh, no, for no, visiting no. Fadam Baka. Uh, and and if, you, if you check the record, you will discover that Fadam Baka was very angry with Peter Obito when he visited because he was not willing to to tow the line. The videos were, were, were there for us to watch. So, but our position so, was so you're that saying that Abaka knew something before he made a prophecy? It, it seems so. It looks so. Look at the result. Look at all the, the decisions of, of, the, of the governorship uh, 
uh, election uh, appeal. Why is Imo different? Everyone knows that this government is interested in the Southeast. They want to have a foothold in Southeast by all means. And Imo is the only available opportunity. And they quickly took that. But a lot of people will come at the PDP saying, when you look at it very strongly, they should have called for a rerun of those elections in the first place. Even the elections that brought the ADO high in. Going back to the two thought spread across. The ADO high didn't have that spread. Okay. It was a leading win. You know, they have that spread in, in, in the states. That, that was government. everybody was expecting so that. Was that everybody, that elections, even them, without even swearing the ADO high in. What would you say about that as a PDP? Well, that, that is why we are back in the, in, the, in the Supreme Court now. The PDP has gone back to the Supreme Court appealing to our very reverse uh, jurist to take a second look at this judgment. You know, a, a similar mistake was made in 2007 with uh, uh, Celestino Mayer and uh, uh, Roti Miyamichi. Twelve years later, the Supreme Court came no, up to say... No, but the context of that case yeah, was, was, was different. No, no, no. Whatever. But, but we are saying that... Well, the, context, the context of that case yeah, was different. Yeah, the context was different, but, 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 but we are saying that the yeah. Supreme Court has come back, back to say, 12 years ago, we were wrong. 12 years ago, we were wrong, and the judgment of that case should not be considered as a reference. Nobody should refer to that judgment because it was given in error. And so we are appealing that this should not be allowed to go. Let the, let, let, let the Supreme Court look at this case again, considering the new facts we are presenting, and let them reverse themselves. So, so, so oh, sorry. You yeah, I mean, I, I'm just, I want to talk about, you know, the precedent that has been set. You know, how we were talking about the fact that the Supreme Court, when, once they give a judgment, it's final. If in this situation they decide to go back and, you know, take a look at their judgment and for some reason of turn it, don't you think that is just going to segue into other parties who are not happy with their results, starting to call for a rerun, or sorry, not for a rerun, for uh, the Supreme Court to take a look at it again? Doesn't shouldn't be, this be a case of the Supreme Court has ruled and you take it as it is and move on and wait for the next for the next election. Well, Nigeria judiciary is not uh, existing in isolation. That's our sovereignty notwithstanding. It has happened in other climes. In the United States, the Supreme Court reversed itself. No, it's even happened in Nigeria. 1971, there was a case, there was a precedence in 1971. The Supreme Court did have a quick look. I mean, we have a guest here, a lawyer here, so, he came so, to talk about it. So if you are too big to be, uh, to be fallible, then you should also be very humble. So what would make what corrections would be your, when what you observe? What would be your case to the Supreme Court now? I mean, so if you were to enumerate a case, on what basis would you say Supreme Court upturned this? Is it because of those 388, you know, local government? Is it because of witness P54? I mean, what would be your gamut of your argument? Majorly, the first consideration is that look at these 388 uh, polling unit that were considered. I make have said these are not valid. The Supreme Court cannot, should not, rather. The Supreme Court should not determine which of the polling bullets, I mean, I mean, the results are correct. INEC is the umpire saddled with the responsibility of certifying the correctness of the result of an election. And INEC is saying these are not correct. Even if you will take a second look at it, the 388 polling unit results were presented by the APC. INEC do not have the opportunity to say, okay, even the 388 you submitted are not correct with what we have on ground. That's why the fact that we have cancelled it. But what was cancelled is different from what you have presented. There's even the fact that it was about 366 of them that were presented on the entire 388. Mm -hmm. We are saying, take a second look. You gave this decision with, in a jiffy. Now you have your time. Can you take time to look at it? Other political parties call some votes in all these 388. And look at them together. Then consider the fact that the two elections took place the same day. Mm. And this guy who was on number four, coming to become number one by your decision, scored no vote for the 27 candidate of his party for the House of Assembly. So definitely, you are forcing a wrong okay, candidate, a wrong governor on the people of Imo State. But the court this has, is not good for our but, but the court has, the court has said, uh, giving him legitimacy. And let's not also forget the fact that, don't you think this is a reflection of what the how your party, the PDP, is crumbling in Imo state. There have been defections in that defections same, already. In that same House of Assembly yes. in Imo. You said that, oh, you don't have any PDP. We, as of today, 
I think we have about eight the last time I checked, yes. and it's only going to increase. Uh, I kid you not, almost before the first quarter of this month or the end of the year, you will have a sizable number, maybe about 15 or 16 members. Well, yeah, in, we in are, that, uh, what we are saying It doesn't that. mean that your party is falling under the cracks in the state. No, no, no. The at structure all. has been, you know, because some PDP people too will go to APC. Let me shock you. Your deputy governor, the deputy governor, that <laughs> a man, his deputy governor, beg your pardon, Hope was Dimba, Professor Njoku, Professor Njoku served as a commissioner in a Mecca Hedion House government. And it was Pope Uzo Dima's running mates. Now, as they disbanded, as, as they brought out the government of Hope Uzo Dima, he's gone back to Hope Uzo, as they brought out the government of Emeka Ehodia, he's gone back to Hope Uzo Dima, and now he's become the deputy governor. Yeah, what can you say about no, that? No, no, it's not only a reflection of the PDP falling in Imo State. It's not about PDP falling in Imo State. But, Imo, he Imo, in, oh, but, uh, but how does, can I ask you a question? Yeah. How does somebody that has had three weeks ago served in a PDP government yeah. as a commissioner all of a sudden goes back again to be deputy governor in an APC government? He was deputy government because the Supreme Court has announced Oh, as the governor. Why didn't he stay with the maker? Oh, no, no, no. no. Why didn't get, he stay let, with the let, let's get the point right. Even Hope Uso Duma himself is a core PDP man. Check his president. Check his president. But he's in APC he now. Have, APC he must have in a holy PDP state. Mm. Even Rocha Sokorocha. Check everybody. But he's a governor under APC now. Yes, yes. But we are saying that the House of Assembly is an entity on its own. Mm. Despite the difference in the political parties that, I mean, the sponsor, the candidate to the House, the House exists on its own. And you need the support of your other members to either retain your seat as the Speaker or Deputy Speaker. I would not be uh, surprised if there are some people who are decamping to, for their pe pe particular interests within the House. I mean, just like the it Deputy Governor just, that went back all did, of no, a sudden. No, no, no. You just said that he was a commissioner and he was named the Deputy by the Supreme Court. Mm. You understand? It's just a change of his, of, of his status. And a change of party, too. A change of his party. Because it was under because one APC was, ticket. And it, and it came to PDP to work with So PDP that's just right? one person down from the PDP government. I mean, that just sure, that sure speaks volumes about Nigeria. <laughs> 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 well, well, <laughs> so you it is. I mean, I want us to talk about the responsibility of INEC here, because you have earlier mentioned that, you know, the problem here is actually, the, or you're being punished for, you know, what, uh, what INEC did. Thank you. Now, even though they are the umpire for these elections, right? They have, they don't have the power to actually cancel uh, the results. So now there's this bone of contention where if the, the, the electoral body has been able to identify an error and took it upon themselves to cancel it, it's still there. That problem is still there. Now, who is, in your opinion, should be responsible for that? How do we fix that problem? Because we're not sure how this is going to go, but we don't know if the Supreme Court is going to come mm -hmm. forward and say we're going to change it. How do we make sure that this problem doesn't happen in the future? Well, well that, I think everybody will learn from this. And as a party, we are, we are not closing our eyes to the lessons that should be drawn from this. And that is why we are going back to the Supreme Court. I, I think in, in 2007 or 2011, okay, 27, Peter will be election. So 2003. 2007. Uh, Peter Obi and Handy Uba. And the Supreme Court, you know, I mean, they appear after the I mean, just to alert you, we'll be going on a break real, real okay. very soon. I'll okay. call you on a break now. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just take that thought after this quick commercial break, and we'll just segue into the break now. Uh, I know this is an exciting conversation, and it's time for us to have it and talk about this and talk about other things. We'll be right back. All right, still on the morning show here on the Rise News, and uh, we're talking to Comrade Benga Ogle, a coordinating secretary, PDP, the Moshe Movement. And we're talking about uh, the emo state debacle and the Supreme Court judgment. So we asked the question before we went on that break. You want, you want to answer that yeah, question? Exactly. Yeah. I've seen that um, uh, in uh, Peter will be Andy Uba case. Yeah. After the judgment, Andy Uba had to go back to the Supreme Court. I said, take a second look at this. Of course, uh, that could not fly. But it is now part of the history that it, it just it just did not fold that his hand. And so we're going back to the uh, I mean to the Supreme Court. We said, take a second look. We are helping our democracy. Mm. We are embellishing the history so that this will not repeat itself another time. So that everybody can learn 
from what is happening if truly we are interested Paul, in furthering Paul, democracy Paul, 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 in Nigeria. Paul, 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 Paul had, you know, uh, court judgments here and there that have been highly contestable in the country. But shouldn't we be looking on how to deepen our democracy in such a way that the courts do not get to decide who wins an election? And I'll give you a very close instance. American election year 2000, Al Gore, Judge Bush, Judge Bush. went ahead to the Supreme Court. It set a very touchy precedent for America. And since then, you see that that country has tried to correct that, that we don't want our election to go to the Supreme Court. I mean, if we're doing the things that the EU says in their report, our election is going to be that way. What's the way for our elections? That is why our party, the People's Democratic Party, has always called for free, fair, and credible election. The world over still give kudos to former President Goodluck Jonathan for the 2015 election. But also, and, and you get, also get, don't forget that Mar Musa Ardua, an election conducted by the PDP government, he himself came out to say that I know the elections that brought me in were fraught with irregularities. Integrity of his, of his leadership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and after that, he set up the Muhammad Uwais election uh, panel to look at our, uh, our election system. And they came up with a lot of suggestions that were implemented. And you know, that, that was brought what brought about Professor Atairu Jega to sanitize the electoral system. But you agree with me that whatever credit, whatever addition that, that Jega has put in, in 2015, it's been eroded now. We are going back to the gutters of our, of our democracy. And that was why in 2019, this, the Senate of the National Assembly consistently were putting it to the president that the Electoral Act should have been signed so that we can have the electronic voting system if we, if we have signed that, of course, President Buhari will not be there today. President not Buhari sure, will not have been there today. You can't say that for sure. That, sure, sure. But of course, you know the story of the Saba, the, uh, the, 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 the voting. But if you and see that the in likes. court case, they said PDP couldn't prove its case in court. It could not because the electoral ad did not recognize El, the Saba, electronic voting. So say, we still rely on the, uh, 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 the Hinden forms. No, some would say that it was because the testimony of your analyst was... Uh, the, 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 he, I mean, His it, background it, was yeah, a little was bit, a bit sketchy. It's not, it's not at all. If everything is based on the Electoral Act, if the Electoral Act says that whatever has been recorded electronically must be same with what you have and, had COVID. And how the so-called so result, result must be transmitted result, electronically. The witness had was on factsdon'tlie.com, which was a website that was, that was claimed not to be veritable. Mm. All these could fly because the basis of the election, the legal framework for the election, the electoral act, was not signed. But I'm not hearing the PDP enough. Maybe you might be doing it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not hearing the PDP enough championing the need to be able to revisit this, you know, electoral act and ensure that the president signs it day one as it got to this administration. The PDP had a protest all over the country. Yeah. It was on the EMO elections and free and fair elections. I didn't hear electoral bills. I didn't hear you know, people saying, let us sign signatures now as regards pushing the president to sign the electoral bill. Mm -hmm. I'm not here the campaign for electoral bill. It looks as though the talk about electoral bill is dead. I mean, the House is going to re reconvene very mm -hmm. soon after mm -hmm. their long recess. Maybe they're going to talk about it. It looks as though it's dead. It's when we are getting closer to 2023 now. Yeah, we begin to we'll have start to talk about it again. Well, you can be sure that the PDP is all how to get things right. And you can see what, what is happening in Lagos PDP with our new chairman, Engineer Adede Jidoati, and his team, consistently speaking to the people. But you must understand that, as a political party, we are partners with the electorate, with the voters, with Nigerians, with the citizens. The citizens also need to speak out. We are investing so much in, in uh, uh, I mean, uh, voters' education and sensitizing our people. As a people, for instance, the, the people of Imo State, you came out in your numbers to vote for your candidate, and the judiciary decided to give you somebody else. Uh, what are the people doing? As a political party, we are coming up. But average Nigerians will say, OK, maybe because we are interested in the party, maybe because we have a candidate. What about a citizen who voted Mr. A, and he now has to battle with Mr. D as his governor? He has a voice. He has a right to protest. He has a right to hear his view. And in Lagos State, we are pushing that, that things are not going 
to be the same But you again. have members in the House of Assembly. You have members in the Senate. Have, has PDP called these members to say, you know what, go ahead and push for this. Let this be our push in the next three, four, five months. You can because be we're sure not hearing that. that. You, you can it, be sure because to that. me, correct me if I'm very wrong on this, it looks as though the talk about the Electoral Act is dead. Nobody's talking about it. Not at all. No pressure has been put on it. You, you can check it. It's, it's actually even trending on the social media now. Um, maybe not uh, directly uh, fronted by the PDP. People are talking about the new electoral act. People are talking about why do we invest, invest billions on the, on, the, on, on the voters' card, machine card readers? Why do we invest billions on training the high next staff on how to, 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 to handle the, the voters' cards and the, and, the, and the card readers? And at the end of the day, our law did not recognize this as the instrument of voting. All these are being corrected. But what we are saying is that 2023 is about two, three years from now. What are we doing now? What is average Nigerians uh, 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 doing about it to speak out? And in Lagos State, where we are, we'll be having one or two elections before 2023 election. We'll be having the local government election. Mm -hmm. The judiciary has come up to say that we recognize only 20 local governments in Lagos State are not 57. And we are putting our feet on the ground to say this is what should be. The local government election should be, export if signed, should be conducted by Heineck so that we will not continue to have the manipulation of the past. And that is why PDP is coming up in Lagos State, where we have, I mean, some control, saying that the Doherty led administration is leading, all the past PDP chairmen have been governized now. You, I can no longer is that hear PDP public. in Lagos. Of course, Are exactly. Sure? Will, will Mr. Salvador say the same? Well, Mr. He's left the party, left though, the party yes. but we, we, if he takes a long poll and looks at the PDP in Lagos, will he say all is well? If you ask Mr. Salvador, he would have wished that what is happening in PDP now had happened while he was there. Mm. He wouldn't have left the party. So everybody... what, what he wanted, Mr. Adego K. Salvador, what he wanted was a PDP where people, people can actually have the power. In PDP, power belongs to the people. And that was what we have been conversing. And now we have it. We have a PDP Lagos State chairman who was voted in by the people, mm. was not foisted on the party by any individual. The power that be that we have been complaining about in Lagos PDP are now outside the system. The former chairman of the party, Captain Tunji Shele, Honorable uh, Setonji Koshedo, Dr. Ogunkelu, some of the leaders, Raman Wokonero, and some of these leaders have come together to say, this is the time to get things right. And that is why Lagos PDP can conveniently have that protest, and you are not helping having a dissident voice from anywhere. Because everybody has come together to support Duarte to say, okay, come on, please lead from the front, and we'll be with you. So Even PDP, Shegun Adewale and Roland. So PDP is ready to Even take on Lagos. Even Roland so PDP has is, come to support Duarte. So PDP is ready to take on Lagos in the next exactly. election. Exactly. And, and, and it has started now. It has started now. New people are coming into the party. Even average Lagosians who are political are not coming up to say 20 years down the line. We have nothing to show. Is the Lagos PDP going to get behind uh, Body George presidency like he says he wants to go? Well, even Chief Body George himself has not really said it all hard that he will be contesting on the platform of the PDP. He said he may consider another political party for, for, for whatever reasons. But as a leader of the party, if he so wish to contest on the platform of PDP, of course, so as it stands now, you don't have any candidate that you're looking at for 2023? For, for now, you see, we are saying build the party. You're having presidential election in 2023, a political party should not just exist for elections. We are building the party now. We are building the structure. There are some people who have left the party who left because of impunity. And now impunity is out. Some of them want to come back. So we are talking to our people to come back in. New people who have not been in the party now are coming up. We are strengthening the party. The, 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 the system at the local government is getting set. We have what we call PDP movement. It has started in Alimosho, Alimosho PDP movement. And we are having it all across Lagos State. That PDP is getting its act right. We are having human face now, mm. people face. We are talking the language of the people. And that is what, why our protest was about the people. People come, see, see the facts on the floor for yourself. What do you want for Lagos State?
that we do not want somebody to sit in one corner of his house and dictate for legal state. Legal state can be better if you allow right-thinking people who have passion for the growth of the state to be at the ends of affairs. And this is what PDP will offer come 2023. Let's bring it back to you know this the Imo state elections. I'm just curious to know very quickly before we go on uh, the break, what your next steps are, what PDP plans to do following. I mean, the protests have been ongoing for a long time. You've called for this review. What's next for the PDP? Now, with the protests, we have come to, to the court of public opinion to say, Nigerians, look at this. It's not fair enough. And for, for to the judiciary, we have gone back to the Supreme Court. That is what the laws say. We have the right to appeal to the Supreme Court to take a second look. So we are doing that. And Imo State is reconciling. Yes, Prophet Soinjoku could have gone for, his, uh, for the obvious reasons, but there are people within uh, Imo State, PDP, who are coming together to say that we, we can get it right. We can get our mandate back. It has been stolen. God willing, we have it back. Be it, be it not, whatever happens, as a party who believes solely in Nigeria, of course, we will agree with whatever comes, come, comes from it, but we'll continue to sound it that the judiciary should rather help our nascent democracy. I would like to say a very big thank you. Thank you so much for telling thank us you. about PDP Lagos and uh, the Emo State uh, debacle.